for order from the select board. Are there any changes or adjustments to the joint meeting agenda that we have? I believe that we wanted to have a discussion about the joint employees. Okay. See how that relates to conversations. So, does that mean we're part of the conversation? That would be an organizational question. We could do it as part of compensation or we could do it uh, before compensation. Okay. Any other changes? The big sewer level would oh, go ahead. Please. All of those need more uh, need changes or additions for government to the agenda. What I want to add would be just for one or two sentences to get this up more headed up is uh, the reinformation still like a relay on the long energy efficient facilities, which will be coming to the office so we can leverage something that's going to be part of the facility. Okay. Preliminary. Okay. 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 Is there anything else? Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, Gordy kind of spoke, and I let him go ahead. I'd like to make an addition. Uh, Sue Levering would like to speak to something this evening. To the joint board? No, for our meeting. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, Brian, maybe you want to kick it off with what are we looking at for increases? Is it currently a 919? Currently it's a 919 okay. for uh, health insurance coverage for the, uh, by the town or for the employees. Okay. So what are we looking at for increases for options? So we had, what we're looking at overall is a pretty substantial increase in the cost of health insurance being our big driver for the, the year in terms of our employee compensation. I prepared a printout for everyone. I didn't include um, the village staff uh, because I, I don't have financial data for the village but I uh, included for your information, uh, total compensation for uh, office staff and our public works department. Uh, and I ran a couple scenarios on that for <laughs> demonstrating if we gave a certain pay increase, how that would impact, um, you know, a special focus given on what, they're, what they'd what they be taking home at the end. Uh, you know, so I think that that's it. I think a real challenge that we face this year, given the uh, inflate, the rise of inflation and the rising healthcare costs, is uh, a concern of our employees actually taking home less money uh, than they do this year if we're not mindful of that. So that was my focus when I prepared data for us tonight. Uh, I made two scenarios uh, for a three percent raise and a two percent pay raise. Uh, and leaving our healthcare distribution the same. If we made the lower statement, a 2% pay increase, um, we would see a... Uh, mm -hmm. Excuse me, could we call Bob back? He got cut off. Oh, okay. Please. Uh, Eric, I'll ask you to... Do that. Just uh, pick up the phone and dial the number on that sticky note. Have to dial nine sure, first. I uh, dial nine first. Shouldn't we discuss the joint employee thing first? Um, I think we'll look on part part parcel of the same conversation. By the way. <laughs> Hey Bob. Okay. How do I put it on speaker? Uh, there's a speaker button. Okay. And then hang up the phone. Can you hear us now, Bob? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, looking at, at the two options, if we have a pay increase of I uh, run the two scenarios, we have a pay increase of two percent. Uh, that leaves our employees taking home 
uh, once we factor in inflation, roughly the same amount that they are making now. So that that's kind of a, a level funded from their perspective. Uh, a 3% pay increase uh, would result in them taking home about a 1% increase. Once we factor in uh, healthcare coverage and inflation. So the top one is a 3%? Yes. And the bottom one is a 2%? Yes. Okay. Could I add to that? I've got uh, some copies of Meredith sent to me this afternoon. I had asked Brian to make copies, so the spec more has copies of our information from the village's point of view, and it breaks it down into the four departments the electric, general, water, and sewer. And um, she gets different scenarios if we stay at 91 and 9. If we went down like to 88 and 12, for example, that makes the insurance of what the employees 50%. So I'm, I'm going to look at the ones that if we can keep it the same, but I'm only one person just to start a discussion on 91 and 9. But it breaks it down for the four departments, and that's what our increases will be between electric, general, water, and sewer, just for numbers to start with. So those are our numbers, like more members to see what uh, where we're coming from on budgeting as with new people. As you can see with the, the increase is the, the electric department, which time will tell later in the near future how beneficial it is for all of us to for the village electric village electric would pick up 74.6% of, of the cost. The general fund would be 13.3%, the water is 5.8%, and the sewer would be 6.3% to cover the, the cost of the uh, health insurance. So that gets thrown into what the two boards can agree on for a percent increase for the employees. So just back to for discussion. Yeah, so <clears throat> this does pertain to the current discussion. Um, in our June 3rd uh, joint meeting um, that we had, we discussed whether the question of whether we should have joint employees. And uh, the first question that we attempted was whether Brian and Meredith would have the time to be able to, to do it. Um, they both said that their time commitment would be relatively low. Though there might be some legal time, Meredith said it could be as little as 25 to 30 hours for each of them. Um, Brian, going on some of the reasons why we wanted to move in that direction, Brian said the chain of command is difficult because shared employees are not responsible to any one person or even one chain of command. Um, another thing that happened recently, the trustees granted a salary adjustment on their own to one shared employee, so only a portion of her salary was adjusted in that whole 40 hours. So a salary adjustment got made without joint discussion. Um, Doug said that beside pay, the issue is who employees are answerable to, which is foggy. Um, Ryan asked if the boards want him and Meredith to do a more thorough investigation, to come back to the board with a better estimate for how long it took. Um, Doug said um, he thinks the town should take responsibility for the employee who has a majority of the town time and make sure there is an MOU saying that the village pays for time allocated to the village. So when people come to the window, they can be served. Gordy said he agrees with Doug and Mike. He thinks it would be cleaner if the two separate. So. Only one board discusses wages for each employee. And that was the consensus of both boards. But here we are discussing wages for joint employees. This was six months ago. Um, and uh, six months ago, the two boards desired, uh, stated a desire to have separate, not joint employees. And I think that was in the best interest of the community and I want to stick with that. Uh, I don't think that we should constrain ourselves as select board uh, members to match the wage and benefit adjustment in the village. And so that's going to be my position this evening. Okay, just one comment just for adjustment. And Maris and I did meet with Brian and Eric on a discussion about moving one employee, giving her a wage adjustment. And we didn't hear anything back. And we as a board, we did decide to trust these to, to put it into effect. So that's that's fair. I'm not looking to. No, I'm, I'm not I'm trying to make a dig. You know, the whole, our whole board didn't, was unaware of that. Okay, so um, I mean, that's it's a small thing. 
Yeah, the word they're just talking about that maybe you can get fired up to help. That's right. I'm going to be very cautious on how much uh, public uh, participation we're going to allow because you're going to have to take some. Well, we will. <laughs> Uh, we're only going to be on this topic for 50 minutes, so that's why... Well, you better let me start now. So I'll, I'll grant you this, but uh, this, these two boards have got to make a decision, first of all, on joint employees or, or not, and then health insurance. And there's a lot of things we got to decide, so... Mm -hmm. I just want to say you need to make a decision now, right now, because it's been six months. I've been stewing for six months over the little stunt you pulled. And Could you clarify that comment? I'm not sure what's A little stocky it. poll? Yeah. With Susie? At your April meeting, your meeting, you told, someone asked the question, how do you decide what they get paid? And you said they're always treated the same, which has been true for 20 years since I started here. We've always been treated the same, but this year you decided to treat her a lot better than you treated me after 20 years. So that's a little stunt I'm talking about. Thank so you need to make a decision now before you even discuss what you're going to do about insurance because I don't want anything to do with them anymore. I don't like the way they operate. I don't like the way they stabbed me in the back after everything I do. If she's not here, I do her job. And yet, you don't have to worry about service at the window because they will still get the best service they've ever had between Susie and I. You don't have to worry about that. But I don't want to answer to you people anymore. I, I don't want to work for people I have no respect for. That's all I have to say. So I guess it does bring up the bigger question of do we want to, uh, you know, make it as of January 1st? No more shared employees? Trustees want it, I think. Okay. Yes. We definitely want it. I mean, that makes it a lot uh, cleaner tonight. We don't have to talk about the, the compensation element that we'll decide yours, we'll decide ours, and go from there. It, there probably still is benefit in the health insurance as a group, right? Or does it even matter? I don't think it really even makes we, a difference. We don't we're all through any, the lead. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're all through common insurance pool. We don't have enough people to get a, uh, a okay. private pool. Okay. okay. Um, there is going to remain, we will probably still have uh, Rosemary and Jan as kind of joint employees because they're not employed directly by the town or the village. Right. Um, they're, they're not employees, they're, they're elected and the village would compensate for their elected duties as well as the town would, so they would get two separate checks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. I think with this discussion on for the next two or three months, maybe we want to split the clerk and treasurer that separate. Coming down the road the next two or three months for you look best move everybody. Yeah, I, I tried to get a note out to all the select board members and I didn't realize that yeah. I would have I'd like to address everybody and the audience too, just on my concerns and I feel like I speak for um, a greater number than myself about um, health benefits and what a uh, godsend that is for each and every person that has them. And uh, um, in my experience, I, I grew up and worked through life with majority of time not having those. And that there should be a value placed on them that when there's an increase, that that increase is a shared responsibility between the person who's receiving those benefits and the person who is helping those benefits. And if you look around at other organizations, a lot of times it's not the employer that needs the whole cost. So I just am hoping that everybody is looking at the taxpayers and noticing that one, they may also be getting those tax um, hikes on their health care, and they may not have an employer that is pitching in for it. And two, that as taxpayers, as the taxes increase, 
that it's not sustainable, especially for people who are getting cuts in their income and seniors who, who are retiring who don't have income that they used to. So as your tax base dwindles, it's, it's not sustainable to continue to raise the taxes. And just for clarification, uh, I don't know how many years, but we have maintained a 91.9 ratio percent. And so any increase of the town and village absorbs certain <coughs> percentage of the increase, but every employee absorbs an increase, or the increase as well. So that, that has been a jointly uh, shared uh, cost that everybody has. Yeah, and that's what, part of what we're talking about tonight is to get to keep the employees whole with the cost that they will have for their insurance would be, I'm guessing, the three percent range. I understand so, that, but that's a dollar twenty more that that as taxpayers we're paying an hour plus an increase in in as yeah it, it's not something that, that that most of your taxpayers are going to receive. How you guys doing tonight? Not bad. <clears throat> I'm a taxpayer in Johnson and I'm an employee. One of the big things with this job is the benefits, as we've talked about in previous meetings. And I'd like to say we appreciate the benefits and know how they are. Uh, I just got a thing in the mail. Imagine whoever's on the co op did. They're raising rates, they haven't done it in five years. I'm not mad at it. It's got to happen. And the only thing I would like people to understand is that there's a lot of places that are paying health insurance, full health insurance for employees. And uh, town of Woka can't find employees and they're paying their guys, they're giving them an option to start out with hardly no experience at $22 an hour with full paid benefits or $30 an hour if you don't take their benefits. And they've only found two guys right now with no experience in the plowing field. And it's not just Wolka that's having this problem. I would like to be separate, separating employees. That would be, we haven't talked about them, I understand it. I'm not sure I think about doing something immediate. Is that a complex thing or is that a simple thing? Uh, in terms of, uh, I think, uh, attributing time. The agreement on the employee to work. I mean, I, I personally am delighted with the two employees. I think we will thank you about uh, I like the idea to work for us as well as for the village. Um, and I, I do understand the benefit of who can answer I just wanted to bring up some, you know, it isn't as quick as flipping the switch. I want to ask you guys the one that I can choose to be made on that. So, is it something we can do with this? What do we have to do to get a memorandum of understanding? And is there likely to be agreement? Um, yeah. I know in the past, Rosemary would do a, a little study on what every three or four years, Eric, she do a study on what the uh, timesheets were per town versus village for all the employees. And that's how we come up with the 80, 20, or 60, 40. Pretty so often, she would just double check the last. So I think that would be pretty, uh, pretty easy with the whole stack will speak for themselves. But like you say, not that anyone knew it's going to take a while, it's going to take more years and Brian's time to finalize it. So we start January 1st or we're taking longer. Where do those discussions go from the meeting? Uh, I think we're waiting for Brian and Meredith to come back with something. Uh, Meredith and I have done some studies and talked to a couple of the communities. Uh, we have just, since Meredith hasn't been able to make our last couple of joint meetings, we've deferred giving a report. But uh, I'm available and I can How speak. close were the two of you to any letters of understanding or anything like that? We did not talk to any communities that had a, I should say, I did not talk to any communities that had a memorandum of understanding between uh, 
solar employees um, that they either didn't need them because they had enough employees or they didn't have anything written down and they just, people did what was in front of them. Uh, so we don't have a model for that, but in our discussions, uh, Meredith and I and uh, the League of Cities and Towns, our advice would be to, if we gave a, a split that reflected the current understanding, we could then start collecting data and, and make more, uh, make another split in the future about so many hours in, of town business and so many hours of village business. But right now we should, the, the memorandum of understanding should be that service continues as it's been so far, that we just don't have the data and we will not be able to gather it without a full year of study uh, because we have too much seasonal work for us to make a good prediction on what's going to happen at another point in the year that, uh, you know, Ann and Susan Beener can really tell you about. It's not a constant level of work. It's but uh, it's very seasonal. Um, so our, if the boards will agree to it, we could do something short term of saying that, you know, work continues as is, maintain a certain level of service, and study the number of hours. Okay, so that would take care of the hours. But I think the inherent in this and understanding memorandum would be that whatever dollar amount is being paid, the percentage is applied to that, and that decision will follow each of our respective hands in regard to that employee. The employees are. I think we need to understand that. So we wouldn't have, so therefore the primary benefit to me is who they're answerable to. And get an awful lot of hot seat for some of the boys. But that's about it. I know when I first came here, my cut was 50 50. We used to get two separate checks, two different amounts of money. And then we went to where everybody was to be treated the same and got one check and I was still 50-50. And then Rosemary and I discussed it and I said, I don't do 50% for the village, I do more for the town. So we decided to change it to 60-40 at that point in time because most of my time was spent with the town. In fact, I was fighting for 70-30, but I do spend a lot of time at the window, especially if she's not there, I'm at the window. If she's not there, I'm on the phone. So. We decide to keep it there, and I think that's a good judge of where it should be. It's probably 60-40 for me. And she may feel different about her percentage, the way it works, but that's how we came about with the percentages. And we've always had an understanding if one of us is busy, the other does it. And you know, she's not the only one that's taken on extra work. I've taken on a ton of extra work since I started here. and never got compensated for it except for the 25 cents. So, you know, it's, I don't think you're going to have a problem. You're going to get the same exact service. Customer comes in, they're going to get the same exact service they've always gotten. Even when I've been mad for the last six months, I haven't taken it out on one customer. It's not their fault that some people don't think properly. But uh, I don't think you're going to have a problem. Just you guys got to write it up. And I'm telling you, I'm sick of waiting for somebody to do something. I only have 550 days left here. I'd like to enjoy those last 550 days without having to answer to 13 people. I'd rather get it down to seven. Uh, one thing that I think everybody agrees on is that um, when somebody comes to the counter, somebody comes to the window, they do, it doesn't matter who shows up, they get service, they get back service. It's never like, oh, that's so and so. You've got to come back later. That's how it has been. And we really appreciate that. And we really want that to continue. So thank you for that. And it will not change. Right. Are you going to take the bill out on the formal or multi week or do that question? So I guess I would entertain the motion to slide forward on the joint employee. Yeah. 
And then tonight, will we adjust the compensation and soy on that tonight? That does not have to be done tonight. So what we do have to decide on is health benefit because the employees have a hard stop here coming right up. What day is that? But does that have to be a joint meeting? If you don't have joint employees? That's what we're going to decide. I guess I'm looking for a motion to be set for it. I'm sending that question. Yeah, um, it's just a matter of being uh, the aftermath of that. Um, we'll worry about that. Um, so yeah, I, I move that we um, eliminate the joint employees. Uh, you want to have a meeting? I just want to check your rights to uh, for the town to take responsibility for the employee and was a majority of town time. Um, And that we get an MOU in place within the next, let's say, couple of months um, on um, reciprocal um, service. And this would be effective when I think when? Today. I'd say January 1st to give us a little bit of time and to give Rosemary a chance yeah. to get back just in case there's something we're not aware of. Effective January 1st. I'll second that. So we got the motion to second. I don't know if you guys heard the motion. Is that yeah, a yeah. I'd like to hear it again? You want to repeat that motion? I'm not sure I can. <laughs> Is there a recorder going somewhere? <laughs> There's no recorder? Uh, we're recording on TV. TV. <laughs> we essentially want the same motion, but we need to take responsibility for the right. majority village employee, not the town. That we separate, okay, so the motion is that we separate uh, the shared employees, the town taking responsibility for the employee who has a majority of town time, that being Ian, and to, as soon as possible, set up an MOU saying that we have uh, reciprocal uh, service, um, effective January 1st. Motion and second. Do I agree with that except for the little part? That motion? Yes. Can I ask for one point of clarification? Yes. I believe that my understanding of this is correct, but I want to make sure. So our MOU is going to be that the uh, the shared employees are their time will be on the current split for time and compensation. Is that correct? That would be my reading of it. Is that Check your it out. We were trying to um, clarify it through the MOU, which would be up to you and Meredith, and hopefully it would be timely yeah. um, for billable hours. We can keep track of it that way. Yes, but if that MOU isn't done January 1st, which mm -hmm. might be kind of a stretch, yeah. that we would assume the same percentage until yeah. I'd, I'd like to put an end date on it, though. I, yeah. I don't want this to drag out anymore. I, I don't really feel comfortable being called out for something. I don't either. In a public think forum that like this. So I, I would just no, like to say. Here. I'm sorry. Um, I think we have. Uh, I think before. what you did was. Uh, okay, Ian. Ian. Yeah. Ian. Yeah. And you don't have comment now. It's still. We'll pass so, it right back to you as soon as we're finished, and you can add to your comments. So a date certain being. Uh, I, I, Feeling like December, especially with Meredith being out. Yes. When's she coming back? First of January. Yeah. So, um, having a, a, a date certain being at the end of January. That would be great. Okay. Is that? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Make that part of my motion. Would that be for me? Yes. Thanks. Any discussion? Everybody happy now? Sure. We Thank haven't voted know. yet. I'm shocked yeah. at how much agreement there is. <laughs> All in favor, soon folks, saying aye. 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 Those polls. Motion carries on a village end. Can you hear it all right, Bob? The discussion? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, what we're voting on is on the village side is to start January 1st, the preliminary part of the no more joint employees. You have to work out the preliminary as far as her and her system. But that's where we're at. All in favor of the motion to signify the nine. All those opponents, the odds have it for the village. Good. Um, so, what is it currently? We pay 91% of a goal plan and let, let the uh, employees pick whatever option they want. Yes, we pay 91% of the gold Blue Cross Blue Shield plan and the employees choose what, whether it's family, uh, single, two person, whatever. Whatever individual needs. Yeah. Um, I throw it out to select board. Do you want to continue that for the town employees? Or do you want to have some discussion on that? It's going to take quite a lot of discussion because uh, we, our health care is, is going up at $2,480, according to this uh, spreadsheet we have. And uh, I'm assuming the 919 has been factored in to this, yes. and this would be the town's share of $2,480.48. And that translates to $1.20 per hour increase that the town has to come up with. So this is pretty going to get pretty tough here. Uh, that's a big increase. In and then wanting a raise on top of that, I don't know if we can sustain that. I don't know if the voters are going to be very happy about it either. Uh, Brian, can I ask a question? Um, yes. So, did, uh, so that there's ninety one percent of a goal plan. So is that the uh, all it's offered is the goal plan, or or could you opt for a? Employees can take whatever level okay. they want. Our contribution is set at ninety one percent of the goal plan. So if you took a cheaper plan, you would just get one hundred percent of that covered. Is that uh, it? Yeah, and, and if you receive if our contribution is greater than the cost of your plan it goes into a health savings plan oh, okay. uh, so that an employee will all employees will see receive the same minimum employer contribution to their health care with the caveat that employees that don't receive health care coverage through us uh, receive uh, instead, a cash contribution of 50% of what they would pay for health care, or what we would pay for health care. Okay. So, am mm -hmm. I reading this correctly that uh, the town's share per employee would be going up? Thirty uh, three hundred and fifty bucks each employee on average, and the employee's share is all of the costs. When you're looking at the sheet, uh, if you don't have a sheet, if they're on a the table on the side, all of the costs on the sheet are costs to the town. They, until you get to uh, the last column on the right hand side, column H, which is the what the employees take home. Is. The column that's boxed in is the employees take home. Okay. All the other costs are the cost to the municipality. So it's not just our insurance contribution, it's the whole in it's the whole insurance cost. So, so part of it paid by the employee and part of it paid by the employee. If we back out, what is the cost of the town for the insurance? If apples to apples, every employee selected the same insurance. Okay. And we maintain the 
per employee or for, for all employees? Total. <clears throat> Total, that would be uh, $13,500 for all employees. For the town's share. Yeah, and that'll vary, uh, that could vary it quite a bit based on yeah. plans that people choose. And, okay, so uh, an employee's selection, what the individual impact of them is depending upon what they're selecting. Right. Okay. What's the employee share, their 9% increase? The 9% increase. So they're part of their 9%. For all employees, it'll be uh, 1,300. If they selected the same options, yeah. the total for all employees would go up 1,300. So just to give a counter perspective, the cost of the village, if you, just be, uh, if you stay at 91.9, the cost of the increase in health insurance will be $21,288. go from $97,219. But we have 40 partners to split it. So out of taxation, which the voters have a chance to decide on, will be $2,800 to the general increase. And there is a little bit of money, pilot money, and we could offset the part of that, that $2,800, if we maintain, if the state will maintain the same amount of payment in lieu of taxes money to the, our general fund. So right now, guys, we're looking at, we read the email from there, that's on the $2,100 to the general. That doesn't count any pay raise for the employees. Any pay raise for employees would be on top of that. Meredith, so that's a different scenario here, though. Uh, we can talk about. So, so is this an average for your village employees? Yep. Their increase would be 300. Mm -hmm. Maintaining the current. Right. Yep. For the merit. Yep. I have a question. Yes. Does the sheriff's department, do they pay any part of their insurance? Or do. I don't know. They do pay a portion? They do. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, Roger will be in. I just wonder because we pay them a lot of money. They do. And if they're not paying any portion of theirs, there's something wrong. They do. Because they didn't do so when I worked there. Jason. I want to get back to our insurance part. Uh, I feel the general consistency in highway car anyway is that we don't want to make less going into this year than we did last year. Um, we're trying to stay a little bit. We're not asking for a raise, we're asking for health insurance to stay somewhat the same for us and this cost of living not raised. Well, we've got a, a spreadsheet in front of us that does address that and it talks about a percentage increase uh, of like two and three percent. And it does talk also about the town absorbing the health care too. And that's what I'm looking at right here. I understand that. I don't know I'm not trying to be rude here, but do you want us to fund our health insurance if we had to well, we have an increase of twenty, almost twenty five hundred dollars on average per employee for health care, and it's getting out of control. Health care is, and it also uh, paying extra money on top of it. I mean, it's like I've said in numerous meetings that we're spending ourselves to oblivion here. There's just so much that people. Uh, can take and there's just so many uh, people in the community, especially uh, like people are talking about fixed incomes. You know, some of their increases don't go up enough to cover what th their expenses are and they go behind every year. How is the small town doing it with more federal than that? How are they paying their employees? I don't know what they're doing up in Mulca, to tell you the truth. That, that's their business. We have to try to take care of ours. I understand. You're on co-op. You're on co-op. Oh, yeah. You just got to think in the middle. Are you throwing a bit about that or are you just paying? I'm just paying it for rally power. 
Yeah, me too. But what, I mean, how much is the increase? Two nine percent. Well, I guess in five years that's not too bad, is it? Okay. So if you're looking at major increases uh, in healthcare every single year, that far outstrips that three percent in five years. I understand. I'm just saying, as a look at an employee thing, with everything going up and we're making less. You're not the only. I mean, there's all kinds of employees around here, and, and that same. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the floor back because we got five minutes to make a decision on health insurance. Number? I uh, yeah. I just want to call attention to uh, the article in this week's News and Citizen. Um, you know, what Jason said about the town wool cut board three is is true. They. Um, have been, um, they had two job openings for their highway department all summer. They didn't get applicants for it. Um, and those positions continue to be open through the November 1st, uh, well, December 31st storm. Um, and they had road washouts just like we did. Um, and um, they were in a really tough spot that day. They had to hire a contract. And they were scrambling to, to figure that out. Um, our our roads were back online by the end of the weekend, with the exception of the one that we asked for enough to repair. Um, so uh, we do need to be aware of the, the pressure on the taxpayers, and we need to be responsible about that. At the same time, it's going to get really tough and difficult to get qualified drivers and CDLs to fill these positions, and we have to remain competitive. So it's, I, I have no interest in seeing people on our road crew leaving because of perceived insults and less wages. There's the there's a cost of beginning a business, beginning uh, bringing people in, of retraining, um, and I would look to find some sort of solution and accept Jason at what he was saying about uh, let's not let's not let them go backwards. Uh, um, yeah. There is a history, you know, which you did mention about the uh, on call time, you know, and, and issues feed into issues and get carried forward. I think that our motivation of our and the happiness within an office of, of our joint employees and of our highway department is exceptionally important. And I think that we're running a big chance of going from the frying pan into the fire. Um, in that, that, that you, if you lose people, you offer more money and you're back without training people. Is the board prepared to make a motion? Jim, is, it, Jim, is it, we're, we're down to four minutes, so. I know you're down to four minutes. Okay. So it seems like the town hall with the healthcare rising costs. Can the state, can you go to the state and say, is there any way to wash these extremely large increases that are happening with healthcare? Well, I would just answer that on the national level, we've been unable to solve this. It's been a huge political football, and you know, it's been been war between, and it's 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 passed down to us at the micro level of what should be solved on a, on a on a national level, and we'll get nothing out of the state. That's my interpretation. And we're, gonna, we're running out of time, but just here's one for the trustees. We don't need this number tonight for the percentage increase. Our meeting's not until a monthly meeting in April. Could we at least a, approve something like the 91 line or something to put on our table and approve it tonight so the employees will have it before 15, and then we'll, we'll have a later discussion on the employees' cost of living or adjustments of what we do for raises. Because frankly, having joint employees after the first year, Anne's gone. She's no concern about as far as wages. We have, we have Susan will be on. I assume Susan will be 100% village. The only ones we're going to have here will be Rosemary and uh, her sister. Yeah, we'll have to. That's why it'd be better if we have a, the same uh, insurance policy because of them too. Yeah. Right. That's something we can at least move on tonight. Yeah. So, Boards, members, something that we at least get a majority on. What's your proposal? Just to keep it at 919. And we're worried about the wages increases, if any, at our, must be at a different time or something. I know you guys, your budget's crunch time, come in. 
I'll move that. Is that a motion? Yes. We got a motion. Do we have a second? Lacking a second. I'll second. Okay. We got a motion and a second on the floor. Yeah, I'll make you may want to make that motion on our end in a second to keep the we would absorb the increase at a pro rate of 91% versus the employee picked up the increase in line. Unless you guys have a difference, something yeah. else on the floor on the floor. Can I make a motion to keep the insurance at 91.9 for ability plays? Sure. Yeah. Second, second, no second. Okay, that motion is going no second. I'll second that. All right. <laughs> And I guess a clarification is that the 919 using the gold plan as in the past. Is that like gold, blue cross, blue shield. Yep. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, we had uh, 50 minutes to discuss this, and the majority of it was probably spent on the joint employee thing. And we, we probably should have allowed more than 50 minutes for this whole discussion. And so uh, it doesn't do any good uh, to put a deadline like that and it would allow not a lot of discussion. Uh, so I'm going to vote no on this. Understood. When do the rates come out from Blue Cross and, or from the state? Or can uh, the, how long, the we, how long the, have we had to make this decision? We could have this meeting in November. Yeah, that would probably be better for future. Because it was just before Thanksgiving, you got the information. Right? I believe so. Yeah. I'd have to, but it was after. I'd have to go back through my yeah. record of letters to see when it arrived, but it was in November. That's a short window they give us. Yeah. Uh, we get an estimate of what their costs are going to be, but their costs are higher than was estimated. Uh, we get that near the end of the summer. Uh, if you recall, I'm sure the employees recall when I came up and gave you a heads up that we were going to see large health care increases. But then we've got another couple of months before they actually give us what the final numbers are. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor, same five, saying aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? No. And the chair votes in favor. Motion passes. Okay, any more discussion on the same motion for the village? <clears throat> I'm probably going to vote no on this as well because I think the cost of living increase conversation has to happen at the same time as the health cost insurance ratio. Um, and what I'm saying before me, just so everybody knows in the audience, the scenario is going from 4% to 3% to 2% the cost of living. I checked before I showed up for the meeting. I believe for Social Security, the cost of living increase is 1.6%, and for most workers, 1.8%. So those numbers are a little alarming. Um, there's a lot of people in town in the village that just cannot afford this. And you know, I, for the town workers and the village workers, I wish I could give you all of you 100 grand a year full health insurance. But in public service land, when you're being funded by the taxpayers, we have to do a balance. So I'm, I'm bummed for both residents and town and village workers, but that's the reality. Well, the reality you start looking for other employees. Bob, well, can you hear this discussion? Well, not all of it. No, I can't. Okay. In your you know what the motion is on the floor for the village? I, I couldn't hear it. I thought it was for the 9 and 91. The motion is to keep it the same as in years past. 91% of the increase is picked up by us, the village voters, taxpayers. The 9% yes. would be picked up by the employees. Yes, I did hear that. The yeah. select board had a vote, what, 3 to 1 in favor. So we're, now we're just discussing how we want to do it on the village side. Any more discussion from trust? You guys want to say anything? Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify with an aye. Aye. All right. All right. Those opposed? Yep. Four to one. Four to one. I said it. Okay. And we'll bring up at 
regular meeting uh, compensation discussion. Uh, two things to review the November 1st flood event. That also, I sent an email out. The Vermont Emergency Management is doing a, what's it, what do they call it? Wash? Hot wash. Hot wash. Uh, on Thursday the 12th, and you guys are all invited to that. Is there any other discussion you want to have on that? Uh, is there anything you want to bring up about that? We don't have much time, but you're not concerned about the last flood? Yeah, I did for staffing. Um, since most of the action is taking place in the village, um, most of the village trustees felt left out. We weren't really brought up to speed. Gordy did bring us up to speed, but we had been working for almost a full eight hours by the time we called. So I would plead at this point, um, under you and Eric, as our command person, that you would have our contact information and our qualifications. Um, so when Gordy's tapped out or somebody else is tapped out, that you can bring the next person in to be engaged. Okay, yeah, we'll take a look at that. We'll be reviewing that next month. Oh, no, no March. March. Okay. Any other discussion? I built one up, just a quick one. Bill and I met with uh, a couple of ladies from Vermont Energy Efficiency and Utility, and it's something that's going to be, Bill's kind of a lead person right now, well, she and Meredith, he and Meredith, but um, it started out, I guess, two reps, and Meredith, two reps, and has, has agreed to, uh, has, to invite them in. We, we've been picked as two utility, or two towns in the state, and one of them, our advantages, because we are a municipal utility, but the reason I'm bringing it up here is it's not quote, just a village electric employees, it's all boundary within the town. So Morseville Electric's got some customers in Johnson, so does Vermont Electric, so does uh, Village of Johnson. So it'll be a group effort to start what, January 1st, and yeah. through the year, they want, they want to come right in and do some uh, major, they did a lot of money they want to spend, and we say, well, if there's anything to spend, Johnson can use it for uh, so, buildings or renovations or yeah. improvements. And I, I emailed Brian and Meredith follow up on our meeting. Hopefully, I don't know if you sent that to them, but basically, the village got a request through Vermont Public Power Supply to participate in this Efficiency Vermont Targeted, commu targeted Communities Program. So I guess, I think we thought it was just you know for the village, but it's going to be it's a town-wide thing. We're going to have... Um, a uh, whole year-long targeted outreach events throughout the community, um, promoting efficiency of Vermont's programs with potentially some better rebates um, for the customers, um, working with uh, local nonprofits and local boards to kind of do a whole community-wide effort. Um, and that's something that will be going on next year. So, um, when does it start? Next January. It's a Gordy and I met with a uh, woman from Efficiency Vermont uh, last week, and so I think they want to start, you know, in the spring with outreach and education. And, um, so at some point, we'll need to get together and talk in more detail about that. That's always been one of our contentions is a lot of the money, as a fellow former trustee, a lot of money leaves Johnson and we pay on our electric bills, but we don't see much coming back. So here's an opportunity to to get some of that money back into Johnson so the people could use it. Nice. Good. Is that it? And if you got anything else, I can't have both to adjourn to the village. So move, stop. Yes. Say that a second. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn to the village, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Close that motion for Motion to adjourn, Bob. <laughs> second. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the rules. Rules. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, no. okay thanks. The select board uh, <laughs> I'll show us a adjourn for the uh, joint meeting.